At 10 p.m. on the 23rd of June, the consensus was that Vote Leave had lost. A contact of mine, number 10, texted me to say, you're toast. And even Nigel Farage was predicting a Remain victory. But after our final conference call with Boris Johnson, Michael Gove, and Dominic Cummings, our campaign director, Gisela Stewart and I were still upbeat. People were talking that we'd lost. The evidence wasn't there. And of course, as the evening went by, it became clearer and clearer that we were winning. But I did not accept it until David Dimbleby said, we can now officially declare that Vote Leaf has won. And that's when I think I punched there. <laughs> <laughs> the UK has voted to leave the European Union. Yeah! I kept saying, we need two speeches, but this was not really reciprocated. I think the, the, the mood was, we only need a speech to concede defeat gracefully, but uh, you and I didn't quite see it that way. Getting to that point was a long road. Five years ago, I ran the No to AV referendum campaign. I took on this challenge as a test run for a possible EU referendum. We managed to turn public opinion from being two to one in favour of electoral reform to being two to one against. Alongside me at No to AV was Peter Cruddus. When I joined No to AV, it was a bit political. It needed that injection of business knowledge. And I think the same applied to Vote Leave. We had uh, a big board, we had a big cross-section of people. What I brought was this business acumen. Having the funding and the right campaign team in place at Vote Leave was essential. But we had three big battles to fight. We were taking on the establishment, we were fighting UKIP, and we had to overcome the natural bias in referendums towards the status quo. To take on the establishment, we needed to recruit big beasts from the cabinet. We needed to show swing voters that serious people from politics, business, and other walks of life backed voting leave. If you look back to 1975, one of the reasons why the Leave campaign then was so unsuccessful is because the leading political figures were seen as very much outliers, in some cases even extremists. Um, so to demonstrate that there were senior, sort of moderate, centrist figures campaigning to leave the European Union, I hope made a real contribution to the result of the referendum. But at the same time as taking on the establishment, we were also fighting UKIP and Nigel Farage. We knew that swing voters didn't want to feel they were voting UKIP by voting Leave. Resisting the overtures from UKIP so we could create a properly cross-party campaign was probably the toughest aspect of the referendum for the campaign team. At one point, the group closest to UKIP, Leave.eu, sent out a statement to MPs and the media saying that Dominic Cummings and I couldn't run a sweet shop. And Nigel Farage appeared on the Daily Politics to say that both of us should be sacked. This was a massively stressful period and the pressure was really on. But we weren't out to make friends, we were out to win the campaign. A week before the referendum, we were riding high. Vote Leave had punctured a hole in Project Fear by organising 60 MPs to say they would vote against George Osborne's Brexit budget. And we had the wind in our sails. But then, Nigel Farage unveiled the most controversial poster of the referendum. The breaking point image was damaging enough, but in the context of Joe Cox's murder, it threatened to wreck our chances of winning. Thankfully, it was clear to voters that UKIP was not part of Vote Leave. The final challenge we faced was to overcome the natural status quo bias of any referendum campaign. As was the case with the alternative vote, or Scottish independence, the change side often loses as people's natural caution kicks in. We had to show how there was no status quo. We highlighted the risks of remain and we showed how leave was the safer option. Getting to what people feel rather than what they say is where the future of research is and this is what we did and the one key thing that emerged on this was the strength of emotional connectivity with that take control argument. So that single message was actually a 
a, actually a decision of genius in many ways because it was exactly what people could understand was something that people just got it cut through straight away to so many people at vote leave we're a challenge for telling voters that the uk is billed 350 million pounds each week for our membership of the eu it's a legitimate figure it's entirely the right thing so we emblazon this figure on our bus and on our literature and our spokespeople repeated it again and again. I make no apologies for this. We had our facts, we had our messages, and they worked. In direct comparison to the, um, the arguments for Remain around the perceived impact on the economy in, in a head-to-head -head question, if you like, the 350 million pound question won every time by uh, at striking distance. At heart, I'm a policy wonk before I'm a referendum campaigner. At Vote Leave, we probably achieved the biggest policy change ever in the history of campaigning. A month on, the repercussions from Vote Leave's victory have already been immense. The economic scares that people predicted haven't materialised. British politics has been turned upside down. And even the European Union is showing signs of reform. As Liam Fox wrote on Vote Leave's whiteboard on referendum night, don't just read history, write it.